Chapter 2. Definitions. Any complex conversation worth having should first rest upon a set of definitions. No debate, no agreement, and no lasting trust can be secured without the parties involved understanding the definitions of the words being used. The following definitions will be used throughout the three parts of this field manual, not so that you can like or agree with these definitions, but so that the definitions in the context of this manual can be consistently understood. 2.1. Sedition. Sedition is overt conduct or speech, inciting or provoking people to rebel or resist authority, especially that of the state or of a specific governing body. In other words, it is that which happens in plain sight of our enemy. Sedition can involve violent or nonviolent actions or speech. 2.1.1. Propaganda. Generally, propaganda is information, especially of a biased nature, used to promote a cause or a point of view. The word propaganda typically carries with it the assumption that something is false or misleading. This doesn't have to be the case. Propaganda can be false or entirely true, but what makes propaganda different from other forms of communication is that propaganda is information used specifically to change the way people think or to move the conversation in a specific direction. 2.2 Subversion. Subversion is an attempt to transform the established social order and its structures of power, authority, and hierarchy. Subversion refers to a process by which the values and principles of a system in place are questioned, contradicted, or reversed usually through underhanded processes as opposed to open belligerency. In other words, it is that which happens without our enemy seeing. Subversion can involve violent or nonviolent actions or speech. 2.3. Sabotage. Sabotage is a deliberate action aimed at weakening a polity or corporation through subversion, obstruction, disruption, or destruction. Sabotage can range from intentionally doing poorly at a job to creating a disruptive atmosphere among workers by questioning managers to actively destroying property. The word sabotage has its roots in the practice of peasant workers shoving their shoes into the gears of factories. Sabotage can involve violent or nonviolent actions or speech. 2.3.1 Friend Saboteur A fellow anarchist abolitionist voluntarist who embraces the zero aggression principle and rejects all forms of coercive slavery while actively employing the methods of simple sabotage in resistance of the state and its actors. 2.4 Ethics Based Irregular Warfare Irregular warfare favors indirect and asymmetric warfare approaches, though it may employ the full range of military and other capabilities in order to erode an adversary's power, influence, and will. It is often defined as a protracted struggle by an indigenous people testing the resolve of an occupying government and its strategic partners. It can take the form of insurgency or terrorism, but does not necessarily manifest itself as such in all cases. Ethics-based irregular warfare rejects the use of violence against the non-combatant and their property and favors strategic selective engagement with those considered highly valued or highly aggressive targets. 2.5. Insurgency An insurgency is a struggle against authority when those taking part in the struggle are not universally recognized as belligerents. Insurgents are often indigenous people resisting the existing authority or government. An insurgency can involve violent or nonviolent actions or speech. 2.6. The State In the context of this manual, the state is capitalized as a personal pronoun rather than its simple legal definition as a noun. The state is the entity, deity, real or imagined, that all aspects of all coercive governments, along with key corporations, the central banking complex, the mainstream media, the mainstream intelligentsia, and mainstream clergy serve as their master. This includes the so-called shadow governments and all those behind the scenes who intentionally facilitate the dominance of humanity through the use of violence and threats of violence coupled with theft and lies. One could say the state is the mystical character, Angelus of the body politic. 2.7. The Great Man The concept of the great man was heavily debated and debunked in the 1800s, but the belief is as old as the state itself and is more widely accepted today than ever. The basic idea is that God, or nature's God, provides special great men at specific times to lead society or governments during crisis, or to advance the progress of humanity towards a greater civilization. 
In reality, the great man theory is nothing but the old divine right of King Smith, modified with modern terminology. The other half of the great man theory that is rarely addressed is the boogeyman. He is the opposite of the great man. He is standing in the shadows, always waiting to take over and destroy civilization as soon as people fail to follow the great man. He is Hannibal at the gates. He is the next Hitler. He is the great Satan, always poised to steal men's minds and souls held at bay only by the wisdom and bravery of the great man. In American politics, the great man boogeyman has developed into an art form. Every four years, a macabre opera is played out at the cost of billions of dollars, almost $7 billion in 2012, according to OpenSecrets.org, as the American people attempt to determine who will be the great man and who will fail to raise to the calling. Of course, the whole idea of the great man boogeyman is pure poppycock and is the invisible thread that holds together the emperor's new clothes. The moment you realize there is no great man and there is no boogeyman, the emperor's clothing vanishes, and you see him for the tiny wart-covered leech that he is. 2.8. Centralized, Decentralized, and Distributed Networks The standard definitions are used in this case based on the 121-page paper Paul Barron wrote for the Rand Corporation in 1964. In brief summary, imagine a bicycle wheel with spokes protruding from a central hub. Now remove the tire and rim, leaving only the hub in the middle with the spokes protruding outward. At the end of each spoke is an activist. This would be a centralized network of activists. All of the activists are connected to the same central hub. If anything happens to the hub, the entire network is affected. Now imagine five or ten or any other number of small hubs with some spokes on each hub connecting to the other hubs. All of the hubs can function independently, so if one hub is taken out of the network, the network still mostly functions. But in taking out the one hub, you have also taken out all of the spokes and activists that depended on that hub. This is a decentralized network of activists. It is more reliable than a centralized network, but still relies on hubs. Now imagine all of the hubs are gone, leaving only spokes and activists. The activists connect not to one spoke and one hub, but each activist has two to five spokes, or more, each connected to other activists. No activist is a hub, and yet all activists are hubs. No one activist depends solely on another activist, while all activists are within two or three connections from any other activist. This is a distributed network of activists. The word activist is used here, but the concept is the same if you use the word computer or telephone or soup can. 2.9. Activism, Activist Some very small-minded people believe activism is narrowly defined as only including the activity that they approve of. Others believe that any action you take, no matter the intent or outcome, is positive activism that should be praised and supported. I call both those types of people stupid. If you take action, you are an activist. Your activism may be useful or useless. It may be wise or foolish. It may be dramatic or calming. It may do what you expect, or it may not. Talking is activism. Posting catchy pictures with snappy sayings on social media is activism. Handcuffing yourself to the door of a police station is activism. Pouring gasoline on your head and igniting it on the courthouse steps is activism. Activism is not defined by the intent nor the results of the action. Activism is defined as action taken for a purpose. Judging the wisdom or the efficacy of activism is a completely different matter. 2.10. Slacktivism Some newer definitions for slacktivism are derogatory perversions of its original meaning. For the purposes of this manual, slacktivism is defined closer to its original positive meaning. This manual defines slacktivism, for example, in an employment setting as intentionally doing a really bad job while not doing anything bad enough to get fired. A specific example of slacktivism would be a trash collector who only half empties the trash cans of select customers for the purpose of disrupting the day-to-day -day functions of that specific customer. Or a waiter could find himself too busy helping one customer with minor issues to attend to the basic needs of an important customer who is the target of the slacktivism. In customer service, a slacktivist may waste the target's time going over details, having them repeat information, apologizing over and over, 
while either not solving the target's problems or taking longer than required to solve it. In the immortal words of Homer Simpson, Lisa, if you don't like your job, you don't go on strike. You just go in every day and do it really half-assed. 2.11. Corporation. According to the United States government, U.S. Small Business Administration, a corporation is an independent legal entity. This means that the corporation itself is held legally liable for the actions and debts of the business. Additionally, the Supreme Court of the United States has ruled that a corporation is a legal person. The legal person status of corporations give the business perpetual life. Deaths of officials or stockholders do not alter the corporation. And the SCOTUS has ruled that corporations, like humans, have certain rights that are protected by the U.S. Constitution. I may not like this definition, and you may not like this definition. Too bad. This is how the U.S. government sees it, and most other governments largely agree. Therefore, this is how the word will be used in this manual. You may like corporations or you may hate them. It doesn't matter.